These are words I never thought I would say. I'm quite enjoying Discovery. Welcome to Sidetrack, your sci-fi TV and movie channel. So, Star Trek Discovery. It's got its last season. We've had three episodes. And I've actually enjoyed all three. I, I know, I'm as surprised as you are. I have always been a Trekkie. I was a Trekkie from when I first fell in love with Star Trek The Next Generation. I was a complete geek throughout the series. I loved Deep Space Nine, probably my favourite season, to be honest. Uh, series, I should say. And then I geeked over Voyager. I liked Enterprise. I was most excited about Enterprise, actually, because I thought Scott Bakula was going to be just the best captain. And he was, to be honest. He was a brilliant captain. But the series never quite hit the nail on the head. Um, it was not quite as good as it should have been. Um, even though I look back at it now and I, and I just I still love that series. Um, but TNG was always my baby. I love that show and I still do now. So when they brought Star Trek back, I was incredibly excited. And I remember watching the first episode of Discovery and being angry. The J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies, which Alex Gertzman was heavily involved in, were good films entertaining lots of light flares lots of action but not star trek as long as you don't think of them as star trek then things like the stupid phaser toy won't annoy you too much or what they did to the klingons but unfortunately alex kurtzman didn't agree he obviously loved what he'd done with the jj abrams movies and decided to bring a lot of that through into his new baby star trek discovery when Secret Hideout did that for me in the first season, it really was an abomination. And I've struggled to forgive Kurtzman for that ever since. So what was it I really hated? Well, mostly the Klingons. I will be honest with you. The Klingon War as well is a part of Star Trek lore that is, you know, there, there were whispers about it between us Trekkies. And the fact that we were going to see that conflict was something that I was incredibly excited about. They did it so badly that it was almost painful to watch. The Discovery herself is an ugly damn ship, and she still is. Even when they did her up in the third one, she's still ugly. The Klingon ships were horrendous. The makeup for the Klingons, made them look like creepy plasticine models. They changed the culture of the Klingons a fair bit. And that was kind of embarrassing. It was badly written, badly presented, but it was pretty. It's a pretty series. All of the Star Treks are pretty. So yeah, the first season of Star Trek Discovery is almost unforgivable. And I can understand why he angered so many, particularly of us older Trekkies. Now, Star Trek Discovery has generated a new, younger audience. And that's great. Always good when we bring in new sci-fi fans. But us older fans, we're a little confused. And the first season really, really made a lot of us quite angry. But then we got the second season and we saw The Enterprise. Now, I've always said that this was a plan the whole time, that Strange New Worlds was always in the back of Kurtzman's mind. When they brought in Pike, etc., it really was as a season-long advert for what was going to come. Now, Paramount and Secret Hideout did this nonsense storyline that was, that, oh, it's the fans, we've done it, we've brought in Strange New Worlds because you fans demanded it. It's not true. They're going to say the same thing when Legacy gets made, and that's not true either. But the second season, with Pike, etc., was almost an improvement. But I'll be honest with you, I really struggled to get through the series. I watched the first season of Star Trek Discovery, and I wanted to injure myself quite a lot after most episodes. The second season, I nearly didn't get through. Oh, I forgot I mentioned the... Um, the, 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 the Tawny Guard thing? What was it called? The big monster thing that's actually one of those little extremophiles. 
that they used to drive the um, spore drive. I hated that as well. God, I don't, I don't even get me started on the spore drive. It's such a cheat. It's so lazy. It's lazy television. It can poop, poop, disappear and reappear anywhere. And oh, it's just crap. And then at the end of the second season, they did that whole thing with the we're going to write the discovery out of the history books because everyone pointed out, whoa, a ship that could do this and we've never heard of it before. Hmm. So they just wrote it out of the history books, apparently. Can you imagine doing the history books on the Klingon War and the discoveries not being mentioned? I think there'd be a few inconsistencies in that. The historians would just have to just sort of like pretend they didn't know or, you know, like just ignore whole battles that were won only because of the discovery. Hmm. Anyway, um, so we got through the second season. Pike was an improvement. The storyline was okay but at the end of the second season we went into the 32nd century now again i was like uh, didn't really enjoy the second season but oh going into the future they'll stop stepping on cannon and we'll get to see some new starships this is interesting i'll give it a go they appeared in the 32nd century and we got the pig in burn just oh, so the federation is on its knees virtually gone um, no one can fly around. Again, the discovery pipping and popping out of space everywhere is, you know, incredible. even more powerful now because no one's even got warp drive. So oh, I didn't actually watch all of the third season. I'll be honest. I, I tried. I couldn't. I think I watched the finale just to see how it all ended. Um, but I only think I watched about half that season. So season four came along. There was some big gravitational anomaly thing. And I will be honest with you. Even to this day, I've not been able to watch all of season four of Star Trek Discovery. I have not even watched the finale. I hated it. It was crap. Giorgio, Empress Giorgio, which was the best bit of a season three, left. Um, and then basically, as soon as she went, I gave up on Star Trek Discovery. She was the only thing that really kept me even in remotely interested for the few episodes of season three I actually watched. So season four, I just couldn't do it. And the problem is, with Discovery, I don't like 90% of the characters. I love Tilly. And when I talk about season five, the first couple of episodes of that in a minute, I'm going to come back to Tilly because I love her so much. Michael Burnham, how is that woman not in prison? I don't quite get it. Um, and she's, even though she's a lovely actress and she's got a lovely smile, I love her, her whole face smiles, it's lovely. Every time she says, let's fly, I just want to throw up. It's just ridiculous. I like Saru and I feel sorry for the actor, poor guy. Um, the doctor, don't care. The engineer, don't care. A lot of the other actors, don't care. Can't name them, don't care. They're just not interesting. Except... For when we get into season five. Now we've had three episodes of this season so far. And I honestly say I've loved all three. I, I have to admit though. There's a couple of spoilers ahead now. Just little things. Uh, the end of the first episode. When they realise um, what the big mission is. And they're going back to um, the creators from um, that TNG episode. Um, and she's talking to the Admiral. And she just grins and goes. Let's fly. I want to see the next few seconds of that scene because I want to see to the Admiral sort of going, oh, oh okay, okay, um, goodbye. I, I just it, watch the episode now and then just think about the next bit. How awkward that would be. I'd be Admiral and I'd go just like, really? Did you just say that? And Burnham just going, yeah, I, I don't know why I said that. Anyway, um... We got to see um, a little bit, I think, of what Starfleet Academy is going to be like. I talked about this in a previous video. Um, I think um, the, the first bits where we see the Academy um, and Tilly, the music used, etc., etc. And I think that's going to be, um, I think we got a feel of what that season is going to look like. But the thing I like about this season is that the characters suddenly seem interesting. They're, they're more real somehow. Um, From the third episode, where the Doctor... I don't know his name. Don't care. Um, The Doctor, though, he has, like, the um, Trill um consciousness put into him. 
I want to see more of that character. I really like that. I really like the acting, and um, and he was fun. He just came alive. Um, so the act, the characters seem more interesting for some real. Oh, I'm gonna have a little bit of a um, uh, a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A um, prediction for season, the end of season five. By the way, somebody's gonna die, and then their corpse is gonna be regenerated by the um technology. They had a line. Um, in the third episode when the engineer's talking about, oh my God, this could even be used in theory to regenerate dead bodies. So I'm like, yeah, that's that's going to happen. Um, Burnham or Saru or somebody, I think it's going to be Saru, is going to get killed and they're going to get regenerated by the technology. So mark my words, that's going to happen. That's so going to happen. Um, but the storyline in this season actually just seems to make sense. Um, a, a few places where they've had plot holes, they've like, they're like, they're really on it. They're like jumping on it already. Again, in the third episode, there's a bit where um, they have to walk to go and get the clue. And um, they sort of go, the captain sort of says, look, why don't you just tell us where it is now instead of all these puzzles? And the guys and the guys like straight away like, yeah, but the, the, we've done this on purpose because we don't want just anybody finding it. We want you to like learn as you go along. And we want, you know, to make sure that you don't use the weapon for something evil. Um, and then, um, so they, they, they jump on what could have been a bit of a plot hole, and they just explain it straight away. I really like that. Um, I really like, visually, I think Star Trek Discovery has always been nice, but this time it seems to be more focused, and that it's visually really nice, but uh, in, in, in a way that, again, makes sense. I still hate the spore drive. But they just don't, like, mention it too much. I'm really glad the Federation decided to go with the different technologies so not everyone's getting spore drives as well. Um, because it's just such a... La it's just lazy and cheating, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but, yeah. If you've always hated Star Trek Discovery and you fancy giving the last season a go, I would actually suggest you do. Because it's actually quite good. Now, we've still got seven episodes for them to ruin it, like they did in Picard, season one and two. But so far, there's no signs of it. And I actually think this might be a really nice final hurrah for a season I've, uh, for a series sorry, I've always hated. Star Trek Discovery might go out on a bang. And I kind of hope it does. But guys, what do you think? Get into the comments. Have you watched the first three episodes of Discovery? Are you enjoying it? Have you maybe not watched other seasons or not enjoyed other seasons as much, but willing to give this a go? Get into the comments and tell me exactly what you think. If you are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. It really helps us out and you'll never miss any of our new videos. Also, you can go to patreon.com forward slash sidetrack where most of our new videos do premiere first and you get to see them without the adverts, you lucky bunnies. As always, please stay safe. And I'll see you next time.